Welcome, I'm Robert Crawford. I wanted to do a video today about my process right now in building my business. Um, I have a few projects going on, a few different businesses, and I really was debating this for a while. I said, you know, most of the people on social media that get a lot of followers, a lot of views, show their successes, right? You have people like Dan Blazarian, and uh, Selena Gomez, these people show their successes, their lavish lifestyle, and that attracts millions of followers. Mostly because I think people are curious of what it's like to live a life like that. And, you know, sometimes they're just jealous, to be honest. So I thought about, you know, what I'm doing now in my business, where we're fairly, I'm modestly successful, right? I don't have to worry about day-to-day -day bills anymore. And I'm investing a lot of money into my business in developing a software platform. A platform that's going to hopefully revolutionize the real estate industry and be a platform for clients that make the experience a lot more seamless and effortless. Um, and also for agents, which allows them to free up their time and automate a lot of their marketing processes so they can be out talking to clients or knocking on doors or just drumming up new business. So I debated for a long time, should I be doing more videos showing the process of getting to that point that I wanna be, or should I wait until I'm actually at that point and then start teaching people how I got there? So I debated this for a long time and then I realized that I think showing the process and the ups and downs is just as useful, if not more useful, than showing the results. So I wanted to start, before I talk about the nuts and bolts about how my day-to-day -day life is, I want to start with the idea of a positive attitude because it's so cliche, we hear it all the time, but really it is the most important thing. And for the success that I've seen in my life, it has really come from the positive thinking, which gives you the courage to then act and go get what you want. So. For the people that I have working on my team, I've created this. This is just a simple saying. It's an affirmation. It says, things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. I have a number of different sayings, but I just want to show you that one today. Why? Because you're training your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is trained whether you know it or not. It's trained from watching TV. It's trained from the years of school that you went to. It's trained from your friends, from the things that you see online and in social media, from what your parents taught you to believe, right? Because at the end of the day, when you're born, you don't really have beliefs, right? No one is born a Christian or a Muslim or an atheist or a Jew, although Jews may say if you're born, you know, you're born into it, but you learn the ideology. You're bred up and taught ideologies or taught political views, are taught scientific theories. But at the end of the day, the law of attraction is real. I've seen it in my own life. I didn't used to believe in it, but there's been too many synchronicities for me to deny it at this point. And when you have a high mental outlook, you attract more positive things into your life even from just a very basic standpoint. When you go into a crowded room and network, if you have a higher energy and you're fun to talk to and be around, you're gonna attract more people that want to talk to you and be around you. It's a very simple equation. If you go in and you're grumpy and you're negative and you had a bad attitude, uh, you know, just two days ago, I went to re-register my car and you could say it's my fault. I debate why we're even registering cars to begin with, but that's politics. But when I went to re-register, I realized, oh, I had two parking tickets that I didn't remember, didn't pay, and then they forced me to pay them. So I had a huge bill to go and register my car, a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. And it kind of ruined my day, but it really only ruined it for a few hours. Why? Because I caught myself why I was so angry when I left the DMV and I called them and said, hey, you guys are extorting me, forcing me to pay you this. This is extortion in my point of view. You may have a different point of view, but to me it was extortion. 
And I left just in a bad mood. And two, three years ago, that bad mood would have carried on for maybe two, three, four days. Probably some more bad stuff would have happened and I would have just been pulling my hair out saying, what the hell, this life sucks. What the fuck is, what the hell is going on here? But instead, I now understand how the process works. And I was able to reset myself. And I was able to reset my mood fairly quickly, within a few hours. I did this by calling a few friends, venting to them a little bit, laughing about certain things. That changed my mood a bit. Then I did some meditation for 15, 30 minutes and really reset where my vision is, what my goals are, and then I went to achieve it. So this is why I thought it was really important right now to talk about the benefits of an affirmation. And you should create your own. You could steal this one. Things are always working out for you. It should be a saying that you know is positive and that you can grain into you. Why? Because when things get tough, and if you're trying to grow a business, we'll talk about the nuts and bolts on how to do it digitally, how to actually make a sale. I think sales is the most important skill, and everyone shits on it, right? Oh, it's just a salesman. Just a salesman. Look, everyone is a salesman. Everyone. If you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a salesman. You're selling things to your kids, you're selling things to your husband, and you're being sold. So sales is in every aspect of our life because we're in this monetary system, right? We need money to survive. Hundreds of years ago, you get by with actually farming your own stuff, but very few people do that now. So to me, it's all about these skills, but it starts with the attitude. So on my journey, I wanted to show people what I'm doing, whether it's good or bad. I, I'm going to share the crap, and I'm gonna share the successes, right? Because I'm doing a number of things. One, I'm a real estate broker, so I'm a salesman. That's what I do. But I've also impacted a lot of lives, and I make clients a lot of money, and I'm very, very careful with who I take on as a client and what deals I get clients into. Because my reputation is more important than anything. and. I lost my reputation temporarily for one point when I was living in Vegas. I started an app called Clink, K-L-I-N-Q. Uh, we did it for iPhone, Android. It was a network where restaurant store owners could connect directly with their customers and actually have a digital store and message their customers and send them push notifications and coupons. And the premise of it, though, was to be able to buy and gift a drink, right? It was a really great idea. And we had actually some pretty good success early on. We had, I think, about 115 restaurants, bars, and nightclubs and uh, liquor stores in Las Vegas on our app. We w were expanding in San Diego. And then it all fell apart. It fell apart for a number of reasons. One was a partner ended up wasting a bunch of money and then he just went to Mexico, moved to Mexico without really telling anyone, which uh, made our investor uneasy, which kind of stopped the inflow of capital. And then we had a disgruntled past partner who didn't live up to his end of the agreement. So we had to move away from him and get a team of developers. He was in charge of development. He did a really poor job. And he was basically jealous. We looked at all the legal aspects and we didn't do anything that was against our agreements or against the law. We had we spent tens of thousands of attorneys to make sure of this. But it didn't stop him from writing a letter that was slandering my name. And then he would obviously find our partners on our app and he would go into them slandering our name, which lost a lot of clients for us. They didn't know whether it was true or not. At the end of the day, it was too much of a risk for them to continue to be on this app if it was true, even though it wasn't. So that was the first time I said, you know, the reputation is more valuable than any other asset you have, except maybe if you have a wife and a family. You know, but from a business standpoint, if you don't have your reputation, you can't make another sale. People don't trust you because trust is the foundation. 
especially now when I'm doing real estate transactions. These are big transactions. Most of the times, they're the largest purchase my clients are going to make. So they need to be able to trust me and know that I have their best interest. And I think that's why I've been successful is because I will tell them if something's not within their best interest. Even if I kept my mouth shut, I would have made more money that way. At the end of the day, I, I would have felt bad. I would, I would have been thinking about it for months and months and months, which would have brought my attitude down, which would have cost me more business. So my whole philosophy is, look, do what's in the best interest of yourself and do what's in the best interest of the people around you. If you do that, that's really the cornerstone to success. The rest of it's just thinking smart and working hard. Success is not that complicated, but people make it extremely complicated. It's really about synthesizing down the key actions that you need to take that will produce the largest result, right? So for our business, it's talking to new clients. That might be cold calling neighborhoods. So we can build our pipeline filled with clients. Even people that said, you know what, I'm not thinking about selling my house for at least a year. Well, we still put them on our list and then we start to build a relationship with them because what do we need to do? We need to get them to trust us, to know who we are, and we also have to be the best. I think one of the biggest things I see from struggling entrepreneurs, and I talk to a lot of them, right? I think entrepreneur is the new hot thing because people associate that word with massive success, right? The Jeff Bezos of the world, the richest man in the world, the Bill Gates, they were entrepreneurs. They created an idea and now they're really successful. Well, you weren't in the kitchen when they were making the fucking sausage, right? So you need to figure out, I'm in the kitchen right now. We're grinding sausage. I used to be a chef. I used to literally grind the sausage. Now we just do it a different way. Now we do it from cold calling, setting appointments, doing contracts, and then marketing the hell out of these properties and creating win-win negotiations. And then I'm thinking long-term, right? Because you could be winning today, but that doesn't mean you're going to be winning five years from now, right? You see that with Barnes & Noble, crushing it, then Amazon comes along, now they're shutting down stores left and right. So you have to be able to crush it right now, today, and produce revenue, and then you need to be thinking, what are my clients going to be like in two years, in five years, in ten years? I decided, look, the future is technology. In real estate, at least, it's going to be technology and it's going to be the user experience. The user should be able to see their offer, see the process, um, be able to do almost everything online and have complete access to all their documents and to make the right decisions. And then they need an expert to guide them and look at that information and tell them what is the best course of action. So I'm spending a fortune, right now I have four full-time software developers that are working on our platform. It's called We Are Realty. We're building a CRM that will be for all agents, mortgage brokers, everyone related to this field. You'll be able to, you know, you won't need to use MailChimp anymore. You won't need to use um, these software dialers. It's all gonna be in one place. So your leads can come in, you can call lists rapidly from there. You can click one button and send them a letter, a physical letter or a physical postcard to them. You can send them emails. You can send 10,000 emails out to your entire database easily instead of exporting it, importing it into a MailChimp, going out from there. Different systems are communicating with each other. I needed a map where I'm in the field. If I'm knocking on someone's door, I can look at their data right there, I can keep track of my notes, and I can track every single property. That's what I'm building. I've been doing that for a year and a half now, and I spend about thousands and thousands of dollars a month. I have four full-time developers, and I do most of the coding for the UI. So I basically code the entire front end and then they do most of the logic aspect, the database and SQL aspects of it. 
So I feel like I have a lot of skills. I do the graphic design, the CSS, the HTML5 um, is the main core, and then they do JavaScript and PHP and do a lot of that functionality. So I want to show this journey so you can see how it all starts coming together. Because you have a dream, I'm sure. And you, I, I hope it's not winning the lottery because sure, you may win. And that's a whole other story on how I picked the winning numbers when I was younger. And that's a whole story for another video. But whatever your dream is, I'm sure it's not the same as mine. But the process and the work it takes is very similar. Whether you want to be in the fashion industry or the music industry, like my cousin Mike, he has a very successful business. He's trying to sell it right now for 10 to 15 million. And he does trailer music for large movies, you know, these big blockbuster movies he does trailer music for. So whatever your dream is, the process is what people usually don't show, right? They don't show you what the actual trick is in a magic trick. And that's what I want to do. So if you're interested in seeing how you really become an entrepreneur and the grind it takes, subscribe to my channel, share it with anyone else who would be interested, and leave a comment on the things that you're struggling with and how I could show you what we're doing to overcome that. And remember, things are always working out for you.